Hello everyone, uh, this is Nolly Who. Nolly Who is a production of Clout Africa where we focus on the contributions of industry professionals to film and television in Nollywood as well as the contributions of Africans in the diaspora to cinema. My name is Edwin Okolo and I am joined this week by our resident critic. Hi guys, my name is Franklin. Very excited to be here with Edwin. Yes, um, <coughs> I wouldn't introduce, I would have normally introduced Franklin, but I think at this point everybody knows who he is and what he stands for. He stands for a good film. <laughs> 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 yeah, so uh, this week we're talking about um, the place of Nollywood uh, in, I would say, nationalism, patriotism, and propaganda. Mm. Um, this is inspired specifically by the new Nollywood film that's coming out called Eagle's Wings, a Nigerian Air Force story. <laughs> that's literally the title. That's of what they film. call it. That's, that's what they've used. And, and I'm like, you might as well just slap us in the face with the propaganda because um, Nollywood has been especially afraid to cover films about the Nigerian Army, the Nigerian Navy, and the Nigerian Air Force because... The government cracks down on films like that. It censors them. It takes out anything it considers unflattering to the image of these um, specific organizations. Yeah. And so for the Nigerian army to endorse a film and allow them to even use the, the phrase a Nigerian Air Force story in the title, you know that everything has been extensively censored before it comes out in cinemas. Um, I think they've been promoting the film since early to mid-2020. Yeah, and I saw that. While we still don't have an official release date, yeah. we know that it's coming out in 2021. That has been confirmed mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, so, Frank, when did you hear about Eagle's Wings? Uh, I think it was... I may be wrong, but I think, I think in the middle... Either in the middle of the pandemic or before the pandemic, actually. Yeah. I think before the pandemic... Um, I had seen a snippet, maybe a teaser video, and I'm like, okay, I'm obviously so. You know, when 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 you have new um new um look, a yeah. new look at something, you're obviously very excited about um the possibility of what it would look like or what you expect it to be. Um, and then I think along the line, I started noticing, or I saw, I think I, I saw the endorsement thing, and I'm like, ah, oh, okay, so they're, they're, they're going to show us the positives, yeah. or it would, like you said, be um, heavily censored. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 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 yeah. I saw. I think I saw it last year. I was actually surprised it didn't come out last year because I was thinking yeah, it was they going did to a join. Lot of promo yeah, for it yeah. Last year. It was, it was, I I literally saw it everywhere last year. So I, at some point I thought it was going to join the films that were having like the struggling November after pandemic yes. um, cinema dates. Um, but when I didn't see them, like okay, you know what? They're probably saving for 2021, which I actually thought was a good idea for them because um, not a lot of films that were released um, post pandemic actually did um, very good in the cinemas, and I think yeah. that's going to be a cinema film most likely. So yeah, um, I also think that one of the reasons why they pushed back the date for Eagle's Wings, apart from the fact that of course um, they couldn't really promote, was because of the um, NSAS protests. October 2020, October 20th, 2020. Yeah. I feel like once that happened and the Nigerian army was implicated in uh, a shooting at the Lekki Tollgate, yeah. it, a film about propaganda about Wouldn't the Nigerian have. army just didn't seem like the kind of thing to um, start promoting or aggressively or pushing out aggressively. So uh, a lot of the buzz around the film died down it at makes that period. Sense now, uh, so I'm not, I can't say for sure that this is specifically why this happened, but it feels like this would be a good reason for them to push back the film. It Propaganda at that point just didn't make any sense. I agree. Yeah, so I don't know what... And I feel like that's a bad omen for the film because we are every time um, people start talking about the army now, negative press flares up. And the film specifically was supposed to cover the Boko Haram um, insurgency yeah. and the government's response to the Boko Haram insurgency. It was supposed to humanize that. the Nigerian Air Force and, you know, the dilemma. Because 
I think Aina's character in the film just married. Yeah, he did. And um, he has to leave his wife and his family and go and, go and, and fight f- because he's one yeah. of the best airline pilots in the <laughs> <laughs> blah. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> and I, okay, okay, so, okay. So it was supposed to be like, uh, this is the human cost of uh, the Boko Haram insurgency. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is what the Nigerian army and the Nigerian navy and the Nigerian air force Have. is having to sacrifice to keep all of us safe. But in light of the accusations that uh, the Nigerian army was complicit in, in the deaths yeah. of Nigerians at the toll gate, unarmed protesters to be specific, it just didn't make any sense to, to have that it. film out at that point in time. Um, but it, it does bring a bigger question of why now? Why is the Nigerian army finally deciding to, you know, put their weight behind a film project? I know that early 2020, um, the Nigerian Film and Video Censors Board, in partnership with the Nigerian Defense Academy, actually asked for film projects um, that would portray the Nigerian military in a positive light. Mm-hmm. They asked for scripts for that, oh, I think, early 2020. They did a call. Uh, I don't know if any projects have come out of that because yeah. they said film and television projects, but I don't know if anything has come out of that. But it does seem very strange that after years of ignoring Nollywood, the Nigerian army, the Nigerian civil defense it's project, being intentional yeah, has been very it. intentional about what comes out. I think they've just realized that, uh, maybe they've just realized the importance of um, film and media generally in shaping culture. Um, because you see how um, portrayal of um, the most simple things go on to influence um the audience um mm-hmm. influence popular culture generally and so i feel like for them it's one of those oh, you know let's be intentional about um shaping how we're seen mm-hmm. let's be intentional about shaping how um people see us yes. which i don't think i have a problem with Because if you're focusing on the positives and ignoring how it is actually, then there's a problem. Um, I'm already... So first and foremost, I'm actually generally scared of um, that sector of... I mean, because it's even as simple as camouflage wearing. And you just know right from growing up, camouflage is... There's this this very negative... Exactly. It's a brutal reactionary response. Like you see people who wear it or you see videos of people who have worn... Maybe as a fashion, yeah. um, 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 just a fashion statement, and you know, it's just They're brutalized. Yeah, so it's 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 just intentional um, PR, basically. I would say I think um, that that's what it is, and I don't think it's necessarily bad if it's done right. And mm-hmm. um, so far, you're 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 being honest um, with it. If you decide to focus on the positives, yeah, okay, that's something, but just yeah. be as brutally honest as you would with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and not that we're seeing like a... a whitewash. Exactly, a whitewash version of um, like everyday life, yeah. how you say one thing and then, you, uh, well, one thing is you produced in the film and then um, in reality, it's like a whole different ballgame entirely. Because mm-hmm. as this is starting to happen, it now starts to beg the question of, who else is using cinema as propaganda? Mm. And clearly, if you look at the history of film, it, it's obvious that the idea that you could use a film to promote um, a military organization or shape per- perspectives around a military organization really came into power during World War One, yeah. where um, American audiences used to go see cinemas in tents around the country and before the film would show... They would show a minute or two of propaganda, um, support the troops, invest, yeah. you know, donate towards that cause. And that has kind of spiraled into what is now the American civil um the American cinematic defense complex, which is <laughs> the Pentagon sponsoring like three or four films every, every year. year. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, they pick a conflict. For example, uh, there was a whole period for about 10 years where after 9-11, where there were consistently films that um painted Muslims as, you know, infidels and mm-hmm. terrorists and yeah. Americans as, you know, the saviors who... And of course, those films they had... The uh, complex, yes, my God. They, they, of course, those films were brutal. And they showed the reality of what was happening in those countries. But it shaped the narrative as, we, ha- we don't want to do this, but we have to do this because 
we are the big brother of the of the world and we have to show up and you know show out. punish yeah. people who are doing bad so of course there are, people have a lot of criticisms about how america has used its um its massive film industry to sanitize a lot of its actions questionable actions in countries um where it has occupied but you cannot really argue with the storytelling Mm. Storytelling is excellent. Mm. And I think one of the things that the American cinematic complex really focuses on is recruitment of this is what happens as a person who is in the military on a day to day basis. Yeah. Sure, people might have to fight, but generally, this you is ju- what your life is like. You know, you get uniforms and you have like this, you live on a base and yeah. you have all these friends, and you know, it's just like this beautiful life. And so they do that very well. And I, I don't know if. Eagle's Wings is going to do that or any of the other projects that they're bringing out is going to do that. It's going to be able to sell that life, military life, as a desirable alternative to whatever you have in your life right now. I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, I don't think so. But I'm also... I think it would be a welcome idea, especially if they're branding it as PR or mm-hmm. they're trying to sell. Um, I feel like it's 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 a realistic approach if you're trying to generally ensure that um, um, you're trying to ensure that this is a film that portrays um, that portrays the military in good light. Yeah. Um, I feel like that should be um, that should be what you should be focusing on actually. Um, I mean, which may not exactly be because they're focusing on other things and trying to whitewash the other things. But yeah. ideally, um, that should be what it would look like. I don't expect it. I'll be excited if I see it, mm-hmm. but I don't really expect it to go that way, really. Yeah. Uh, also, it feels, this might be a stretch. Yeah. But it feels like Eagle's Wings specifically was created as a response to Desmond of Yagile's The Milkmaid, mm. which tells the story of the Boko Haram insurgency from the point of view of the victims mm-hmm. and doesn't really have a, it doesn't really interface with the military at all. Mm-hmm. They're not the focus of this yeah. project. It's the victims and the insurgents, yeah. and it humanizes the insurgents mm-hmm. and humanizes the victims, yeah. but doesn't really reference the Nigerian military's at all. influence and or. And so, I, 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 apart from the fact that um, Desmond Obiayele's film was heavily censored, mm. it, it was supposed to have come out 2019, but the Nigerian Film and Video Censors Board said, nope, 2020, <laughs> nope. nope. And even now, nope. But the aggressiveness with which Eagle's Wings was promoted and the way it was like, this is in Boko Haram story, it feels like that was supposed to be like the counter. That they knew that. They could censor it in Nigeria, but they couldn't censor it internationally. Yeah. And they wanted a story that counters that That's... from their point of view, which their approval. And I feel like that was what that was. Um, I don't think it's out of place to think that. Yes. Especially because this month's film has been, um, was supposed to originally be released for 2019. So yes. it actually makes, there's, <clears throat> there's ample time for them to have made yeah, the response um, yeah um eagles wings um yeah i don't think so i'm actually curious as to why they hadn't even thought of this from the onset mm-hmm. ideally because i feel like this should have been and that, that's the thing documenting history is not entirely something i don't know that we do very um, a lot of yeah um and, and and it's one thing I'm maybe fasc, um, fascinated with um, Hollywood because of there are a lot of um, documentaries yeah. and movies. Um, the Crown yeah. just shows that um, happened happened like a very long time ago, but they're making um, or they're they're out in the yeah. in screens now or on streaming platforms. They're revisiting those yeah, exactly. Ideas. And you're just curious. I know how many times I've actually watched documentaries, and I've gone back to read about well, these yeah, people the goal, yeah because yeah. i want to actually know so i feel like um the um the military's response to um the book Haram should some, should have been done like a very very long time ago yeah. um because this is for posterity's sake if you mm-hmm. want to say you've done this yes then yeah. you should actually find the um ways to replicate um this i'm not sure they're like even books mm-hmm. like nobody's just you know it's just more or less like oh we've done this we've done this yeah yeah capish and and i think that as you're talking about history and documenting history, 
uh, there's no way we can actually have this conversation about propaganda and censorship without talking about half of Yellow Sun. Oh wow! Uh, we the B Bandili yeah. um, uh, adaptation of, of half of, of half of Yellow Sun yeah. and how it was censored so badly mm-hmm. to the point where the actual film that eventually was shown in limited release in cinemas in Nigeria was, a was completely different from the actual film that yeah. was made. Yeah. Um, so it, it's not really out of place for them to censor um, The Milkmaid because there is a precedent for this has been, this is not the first time that um, films have been censored that extensively. Uh, there was such a buzz around the censorship of Half of a Yellow Sun and how the government was just like, we're not, we don't care that this is what happened. And, more importantly, the message that sent to um, Igbo people across the country and in the diaspora yeah. that this story, if it's not in line with what we think should be the story, or we're not going not... to allow it, we're not going to entertain that kind of storytelling. That's so, crazy. Yeah, that that was that was disappointing, which yeah. is why I feel like it now take is now taking the work of people like. Um, Ifoma Chukogo, yeah, who released right. the No Victors okay. documentary yeah, independently yeah, yeah. to challenge those um, conceptions and just avoid, like, circumvent the um, cinema release system altogether. Um, to just like, so I think that that's eventually where we're going to have to end up in a place where people just tell these stories independently put them on virtual streaming platforms and, that's the and hope for the best. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to ask, what do you think, I know because I know you've seen Milkmaid. Yeah. Um, what do you think would have been worst case scenario if the Milkmaid was released as it is right now? Yeah, so I, I think that the worst case scenario would have been that people would have disagreed with how it was portrayed. Um, I think one of the things that the Milkmaid does very well is that it finally demystifies Fulani people. Mm. There's this whole misconception that, you know, Fulani people are rich, are all rich <laughs> and all elite <laughs> and they are all in government yeah. or they know somebody in government when in reality there are a lot of Fulani people who have no connection to power, have no connection to the federal government, who are suffering. Mm-hmm. And the milkmaid says that all our conceptions about Oh, the, the Fulani herdsmen and Fulani people, you'd have to re examine all of those conceptions. Yeah. And I don't think people like that. So, <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things I think that if the milkmaid was allowed to be released in the um, form that Desmond created the film, we would have had to have those difficult conversations about who are, who are the victims of the Boko Haram crisis. And at the end of the day, of course, a lot of us have suffered. <laughs> Um, we've had bombings, we've had uh, serial killings, and we've had abductions. But the people who actually have had their lives uprooted are Fulani. Mm. Are the people in the hamlets and the villages that have been occupied in Yobe State and in Adamawa State. And their stories are not being told. And Desmond does that. So I think that that would have been the worst case scenario. would have had to have like a, a serious conversation about who are the real victims of the Boko Haram insurgency um, um, have we done enough as a country to, you know, amplify their stories? Yeah. To advocate for their rights, uh, to relocation, to at least if you're going to be put in, because um, the bombing at Iran in 2019, where the Nigerian Air Force bombed an IDP camp, it was those people that were at those camps, and those are the people who died, and we still don't know their names till today because it's not. We don't really see them as people. And that's the point of cinema. The point of cinema is to humanize uh, populations and demographics and people that we otherwise would have not had an, a chance to tell their stories, to humanize them and tell their stories. And so I think that's what Desmond was trying to do with the film. And that for him to be censored in that way, it's kind of sad. Mm-hmm. Okay, fair enough. Because when I watched when I watched Milkmaid, I was trying to see um, what would have actually been the worst case scenario mm-hmm. outside having um, conversations about these things that we have actually obviously swept on the yeah. the carpet, and I couldn't find any yeah. because I don't think it necessarily incites anybody to violence mm-hmm. or anything, and that was what I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Before we kind of round things up, I just want to um, I want to get a sense of what you think of 
how Nigeria's cinema as a whole has portrayed conflict, just inter-tribal conflict, inter-religious conflict. Like we have, we have, I think about twenty something years of cinema, mm -hmm. but there are no films specifically. I'd say the, I think the only film I can think of is the biopic of Sani Abacha. Mm -hmm. uh, I think something about the grasshopper or something. I can't remember what it was yeah. called. But that's the only film I can think of that actually focuses on conflict in Nigeria and tells a good, compelling story about a major conflict or a major character that, you know, inspired the conflict or was propagating a conflict. Uh, what do you think? Like, why has our storytelling around conflict generally been so bad? Hmm. I, I, I feel like, you know, so even the ones that are out um, that talk about conflict mm -hmm. still are met with censorship. And mm -hmm. I feel like that is probably the biggest... Um, the biggest issue or the biggest problem um, that would, because people want to tell these stories, okay. I'm sure. Um, there is, or there are young people, young directors, older directors who I'm mm -hmm. sure would even want to um, take the helm on this project and just um, work on it. But the idea that um, you would be censored at, I mean, at any point, any point the, uh... in time, after you have probably put in your life's efforts or your mm -hmm. life's work into it's just really crazy. And it doesn't even end with the censorship because it could be as, as, um, it could be other things, you know, you have threats every now and then, and you're just like, oh, you know, I'm not sure that we're actually ready for, um, for things, and which is why people tend to go like the very, um, it's so easy to um, to do a rom com exactly. Instead. Yeah, I mean, so it even begs because first and foremost, you're even when you do films like that, you have to do a lot more work, yeah, a lot marketing more research, work. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. So you do more research, you do more marketing stuff because it's not exactly the type of films that people want to see in the cinemas. At mm -hmm. least, if anything, on our best, um, on our highest grossing films, yeah. tell us anything. It's the fact that oh, you know. The more serious film, the more serious the film is, the less people are enthusiastic to see it. Yeah. So, um, um, you have to do extra work, and then you're then the censorship is just there, like smelling. Yeah. Like, you're just like, you know what? <laughs> Might as well put um Sharon Oja and Mauli yeah. chasing each other yeah, and, and just like smacking lips. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the end. I make my money. Everything goes on fine. I'm sleeping in my house. I'm eating well. Yeah. So I, I think biggest problem would be censorship at the end of the day. Yeah, the fact that you know anything can happen at any fucking time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, hopefully we finally find a solution to that. Uh, thank you so much, Frank, for discussing this with me. Thank you. Uh, this was Nolly Who, a production of Cloud Africa, um, where we focus on uh, film and television in Nollywood and on the continent, as well as the contributions of Africans in the diaspora to cinema. Uh, if you like this episode, please like and subscribe and share with your immediate and extended community uh, from us. This is goodbye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cloud. 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 Reach out.